Hey, Anchor Point, small groups. I'm so glad uh, to be with you again in this way as we continue our study um, as a whole church um, on Paul's letter to the Colossians. And I want to read the text um, that was preached on Sunday, particularly uh, with an emphasis on verses 7 and 8 um, from Colossians chapter 1. So if you have your Bible, uh, maybe go ahead and grab it right now. And um, as I'm turning there, I want to read these verses, and then we'll recap um, the sermon on Sunday uh, for before your conversation uh, with the questions that are in front of you. Paul says this in Colossians chapter 1, verses 3 to 7, or 3 to 8. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing, as it also does among you since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. One other text I want you to turn to, Colossians chapter 4. Just turn, turn the page, Colossians chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Another mention of Epaphras. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, greets you, always struggling on your behalf in his prayers, that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has worked hard for you and for those in Laodicea and in Herapolis. And so what we talked about on Sunday is a man who was used by God to start the church and make disciples in Colossae. His name was Epaphras. And Epaphras in the New Testament he gets three mentionings. That's it. A total of five verses, three mentionings. And yet, as we saw on Sunday, he had far more impact than just three uh, mentions, mentionings in the New Testament, didn't he? Um, what we learned on Sunday is, first of all, uh, in verse one or verse seven of chapter one, just as you learned it from Epaphras, that tells us that Epaphras learned it from someone else. Um, other people invested and discipled Epaphras in order that he could bring the gospel to his hometown and make disciples there and eventually plant a church. And so we talked about the church in Ephesus had a vision to reach the region and to disciple as many people as possible and the fruit of that was an Epaphras who lived 120 miles away from Ephesus. And we don't know how, who invested in Epaphras, whether it was Paul or a number of other believers. But the point was that any church that sets out to make disciples and um, proclaim the gospel ends up uh, seeing Epaphras-like leaders emerge, and all kinds of people emerge. And that's what happened uh, in the life of Epaphras. Epaphras was every disciple of Jesus, every leader, is the fruit of a series of investments and handoffs, including when you look at your own life. Um, somebody invested in you so that you invested in others. Paul perhaps invested in Epaphras, and, it, and Epaphras then in turn taught the gospel and made disciples to others around him. And then finally, as we talked about on Sunday, in all likelihood, you and I, 50 years from now, will not be known by anybody. I mean, maybe we get a few short sentences in passing about us. Oh, yeah, there was this so-and-so person. And we might not even get that. Epaphras got five verses in all the New Testament, and yet... Man, you go back to the first century in Colossae, he left an impact 
on people around him because he was invested in the gospel. He was invested in people. People mattered to him. And so two things about Epaphras that we learned. We learned that um, he earnestly um, wrestled with, the word wrestling is like labor, toiled to the point of exhaustion. He wrestled with his, for his people, for his home church in Colossae in prayer. And he worked hard, extremely hard to the point of exhaustion um, for his church family. And so wrestling in prayer and working hard are one and the same things when it comes to um, making disciples, whether that is investing in uh, our youth ministry, um, our kids ministry, or being involved in a small group like this, investing in the um, whatever area of ministry that God's called you to, pray hard and work hard, work hard and pray hard. And that's how you know how to pray. And that's how you know how to work. That was Epaphras. And so um, a church that sets out to make disciples will see disciples made, and there will be fruit behind that. Every disciple and leader is the fruit of a series of investments and handoffs. And finally, it's the likelihood that you and I, the likelihood that you and I 50 years from now are going to be anything more than a footnote um, in people's lives um, uh, is pretty high. We're not going to be known. You know what? We need to be content to be a footnote like Epaphras was. He got three verses, five verses, and yet he had a great impact. And so God um, bless you and keep you as you study the word tonight and um, uh, be encouraged. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful time together. Love you all.